His South African parents told him a good idea can change the world. Today, sharp-witted, renowned physicist Neil Turok uses his cosmic voyaging mind to ponder big ideas in this worried world. In his work, he collaborates with many Einsteins and with science stars like Stephen Hawking. Stay with us for Turok's take on everything from the Big Bang Theory and what banged to why he thinks the love of nature can bring us together in an unhappy place. Turok says, in this digital age, we are on the brink of another major shift, and you ain't seen nothing yet. Well, it is my pleasure to be with you today and with world-renowned physicist Neil Turok. Turok often says he is the luckiest person alive because he gets to spend his time wondering and wandering about the universe. When he was a young lad in South Africa, he studied beetles. Today he lives in the bizarre and beautiful world of theoretical and quantum physics where he explores major scientific discoveries. He's the director of the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics in Waterloo, Ontario. This year he has written a book for the CBC Massey Lectures which he calls The Universe Within. One thing that puzzles him is why in this amazing world there is so much unhappiness. Yes. With all these miracles happening around us every yes. day. Right. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, let's go back before we go forward. Yes. To your roots in South Africa. Yes. You followed beetles around, not B E A T L E S S, but no. beetles, bugs. Bugs. I always found them very fascinating because I think uh, nature is so beautiful, and uh, just the architecture of a, a beetle is such an exquisite mm. and wonderful thing. So I, th I always thought I was going to be a biologist. Or an entomologist. Or an entomologist. One in of those ologists. In fact, a coleopterist, because that's what beetles are. Oh, really? Yes. I'm so happy to know that. <laughs> that makes right. me happy to Good. know that. Good. Okay. <laughs> and then you looked at the stars and you said, uh, Yeah. What's going on up there? And then I discovered math, and I discovered the way in which math describes a universe. Uh, I still think of it as a miracle. Math describes the universe meaning what? Meaning that uh, from Isaac Newton, who understood that the solar system is described with exquisite precision, precision by mm -hmm. uh, beautiful mathematical equations. And then from then, Maxwell discovering the laws of electricity, magnetism, and light. And then Einstein discovering the equation governing the cosmos. Uh, we have been able to learn things about the universe which are truly ridiculous when you think about them. Um, that we now understand the universe on scales of one billionth the size of an atom. That's the size of the Higgs boson recently discovered. Okay, the Higgs boson is what? <laughs> I know, we have to do the dummies, <coughs> the dummies Guide to Physics. Well, the first thing to say is it was predicted in the early 60s on the basis of math, and physical principles discovered earlier in the 20th century, quantum physics and relativity. But the amazing thing is that it was predicted by a theoretical physicist, essentially with pencil and paper, working out the implications of fundamental principles of physics 50 years ago. Oh. And then the greatest experiment of all time, the Large Hadron Collider, was built. Mm -hmm. It's a 10 billion euro experiment. Is this in Switzerland? In Switzerland. And it looked for the Higgs boson, pre predicted by this one, you know, S Scottish professor <laughs> in, in the 60s. And bingo, there it was, exactly as expected. So for me, the amazing thing about this is that the human mind has the capacity to see very deeply into the universe uh, on scales which are so remote from our everyday experience mm. that <coughs> they, they can have it's a mystery why we're able to do that. And I, I, part of the goal of my lectures is to share this with people, uh, the spectacular progress physics has made just in the last 20 years and what this may mean for the future. And you point out in The Universe Within that often an ordinary person makes an enormous discovery yes. or develops a theory. Right. Yes, I think the story of, uh, of math and physics goes back to our origins in Africa. And it's very often the oddballs who make the greatest discoveries. 
And one of the themes of physics uh, is that uh, human beings have this capacity which is common across all countries and cultures. It arises um, uh, in a mysterious way. But there are people who are able to make these discoveries about fundamental truths uh, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, the way the universe works, way ahead of experiments or observations, uh, which are, of course, necessary to check these ideas. Sure. I, I said to you in the uh, green room, uh, most of us can spout Shakespeare spear, or a little <laughs> bit of Shakespeare. Uh, yeah. We certainly know uh, who won the football game last night. Yeah. But ask me about a photon or a proton or an atom yeah. or the difference between quantum and uh, physics and theoretical physics. Huh? Yeah. Really? So let's start there. Classic physics is... Yes. Well, um, I think part of what you're saying is that there has been a separation mm -hmm. of physics from the rest of society goes back to the Middle Ages and before. Uh, physicists became rather isolated, technical, focused on all kinds of details, and the rest of society is just sort of waiting for the next discovery from physics, because physics absolutely underlies the modern world. Everything we use, from plumbing to planes to cell phones. Uh, to superconductor trains. To superconductor, it all is an outcome of this ability of the human mind. The laptop. The laptop. Uh, it, the, the human mind has an ability to understand the universe and to use that understanding. Mm -hmm. And that's a main driver of, of, of progress. So it seems to me very important that people do understand a bit more about physics and where it might lead us. Where will it lead us, do you think? Well, I think um, at the beginning of the 21st century, there are basically three key problems facing physics. One is uh, the Big Bang singularity. Uh, we know now there was a Big Bang. We have tons of observational evidence. We've discovered uh, the, the many things about the structure of the universe. And we now have theories which are capable of probing that first moment. Uh, so that's one of the big challenges. And I hope within the next couple of decades, we'll have a definitive answer to where this all came from. Really? Yeah. Uh, I know your grade school teacher <laughs> said to you once, uh, what banged? Right. And, and if there was one big bang, was there a bang before that? Exactly. And was there, or do we know? We are coming close. I think we have different competing scenarios right now. But what is unprecedented is we have the mathematical tools and theories mm. which allow us to make very precise models, and then we have experiments which are scanning the sky, collecting radiation from the Big Bang, and checking those theories. Uh, so we can expect very dramatic progress in the next couple of decades. 